Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to learn the traveling salesperson problem. Specifically, we're going to cover two different algorithms for finding an approximation for the traveling salesperson problem, which is also called the TSP problem for short. So some terminology I'm going to use throughout this video, I'll put this here as a reference for you. Uh, you can refer back to it if I use a term you don't know. So let's dig into the problem first. The traveling salesperson problem or traveling salesman or TSP problem is basically you're given a list of cities and with known distances between each two cities you have to find the shortest circuit to visit every city exactly once and end up at your starting point. So in a more general sense we could call this an undirected graph. It's undirected because you could go in either direction between two cities. It's always the same distance and it's weighted because there's a distance between each two cities. This is known as an NP-hard problem, basically just meaning that it can't be solved in polynomial time. It only, can only be solved in exponential time. In other words, the time required to solve the problem grows exponentially with the size of the input. So all we can really do is try and find an approximation of an optimal solution. We won't be able to find an optimal solution, but we can approximate an optimal solution using these two algorithms we'll cover in this video. So what we're looking for is a Hamiltonian cycle, and that means that we must visit each vertex exactly once, not twice, not zero times, each vertex exactly once. And basically each city is a vertex, of course. And we must end at our starting point, so we need to make our way back to where we started. What we're going to solve is called the metric TSP problem, and that just means that there are no negative edge weights. Uh, there's a positive distance, some distance greater than or equal to zero between any two cities. And also, we're going to acknowledge the triangle inequality, which basically just says that the shortest distance between any two cities is a straight line. You can visit a third city traveling between two cities, but that will always be longer than or the same as the shortest distance or the straight line distance between those two cities. So that is basically the problem and the specific problem of a traveling salesman trying to find the shortest route between cities is generalized in computer science and modeled using a weighted undirected graph. So this is the MSTDFS, or Minimum Spanning Tree Depth First Search Method. Actually, both of our two algorithms that we're going to use require knowledge of minimum spanning trees. I'll walk through it briefly, but I strongly recommend you go back and watch first one of my two videos where I explain how to find a minimum spanning tree, namely Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. And I'll put links down below in the comments. So I recommend you follow those links and watch those one of those, at least one of those two videos. Kruskal's is probably the more popular one. So we're going to start with a complete graph. What is a complete graph? Well, here we have five vertices, and you can see that a complete graph has each vertex is connected to every other vertex in the graph. There are four edges going out of each vertex to each of the other vertices. And in a weighted graph, which this would normally be, uh, we would know the weights or the distances between each of these vertices, so each edge would have a weight on it. Since we're not going to go through the details of how the minimum spanning tree works in this video, I didn't put edges on it. This would be a weighted graph, though, in a normal TSP problem. So we'll start with a complete graph with weighted edges. We'll find the minimum spanning tree, which essentially works like this. We pick a root vertex, in this case A, we'll say A is our root vertex, we find the shortest edge out of A that goes to an unvisited vertex. And then we continue adding the cheapest edge that goes to another unvisited vertex until we've visited every vertex in the graph. And from that we get a minimum spanning tree which is basically the cheapest way of getting from A to every other vertex in the graph. So we have our minimum spanning tree. Next step is to do a depth first search traversal. Okay, I have a separate video on depth first search, so I'm not going to cover that in detail, but I'll skim through it quickly in this video. So if you're interested in DFS details, go and watch my depth first search video. 
For this video, I'll show you how we walk through this tree using depth first search. So we're going to start at our root node A. We're going to descend down the tree, hence the term depth first. We continue down the tree. And then when we get to the bottom, we work our way back up. And then we descend down the other branch of the tree. And then we work our way back up when we reach the bottom. We continue to work our way back up. And then we continue to work our way down the tree. So we're going down the tree first and then across. So now that we've covered every vertex, we go back to our starting point A. So you can see that's the path we're going to follow when we use a depth first search traversal of the tree. We've covered every vertex, but we've also covered every edge two times. Two times every edge. So that's not ideal. That's not an optimal solution, right? First of all, we don't want to visit each vertex more than once. We want to visit each vertex exactly once. And we visited, in this case, uh, a lot of these vertices more than one time. So we can take some shortcuts to shorten up our route here. Well, since when we get down to B, our next vertex to, that we need to visit is E to make a tour. So we don't really need to go back up to D and then down to E as we would in a depth first search traversal. So we can scratch this line and this line. Because of the triangle inequality, we know that going from B straight to E is shorter than going B to D to E. So we scratch that route and we shortcut from B straight over to E. And then from E, well, the next vertex that we're going to visit that's unvisited is C. So that's where we really want to go. So instead of this backtrack route, and this backtrack route, and this route, we've cut out three different legs here, three different edges that we don't need to travel. We can go from E straight to C. Again, because of the triangle inequality, we know that going straight from E directly to C is shorter than this uh, roundabout way of visiting two or three other places along the way instead. So now we have a Hamiltonian cycle where we go from A to D to B to E to C and then back to A. We've deleted the duplicate vertices, and this is our Hamiltonian cycle. Okay, so the method we just covered, the MST-DFS method, gives us some solution, some tour, that is greater than or equal to the optimal solution, but it's less than or equal to two minimum spanning trees, because as we noticed when we walked a depth-first search of the minimum spanning tree, we covered each edge in the minimum spanning tree twice. So that, that's the worst case scenario where we have two minimum spanning trees and the best case scenario would be one minimum spanning tree. So our minimum spanning tree tour where we cut out the shortcuts, well, if we find no shortcuts, then the, then the worst case is there are two minimum spanning trees. That's the maximum distance we're going to cover. And the best case is one minimum spanning tree. So the RMST tour using the depth first search method is going to give us something between the optimal solution and two minimum spanning trees. So since this is worst case, two times the optimal solution, we call this a two approximation algorithm. The second method we're going to look at is Christophides algorithm. Christophides is known as a three halves approximation algorithm because it gives us a one and a half times uh, approximation. So the process here is to find a minimum spanning tree, same as the previous method, and then we're going to find a minimum cost perfect matching for all vertices with an odd degree in that minimum spanning tree. Odd degree means an odd number of edges. We're going to add that set of edges to the minimum spanning tree, and we're going to find a Eulerian tour which I'll explain when we get to that. And then we're going to shortcut that tour as we did in the first method to make a Hamiltonian cycle. So this only varies slightly from the first method that we did in the sense that we're finding a perfect matching M for vertices with an odd degree. So let's take a look here. Christophides algorithm, we're going to start with a graph. And again, it's a complete graph. We have 
uh, all vertices are connected to all other vertices, we find our minimum spanning tree, and we're going to say in this case it looks like this. This is our tree, and we can see which edges we have here connecting, uh, again with our root node A. Step three is to find a minimum cost perfect matching, M, for vertices with an odd degree. So a vertex with an odd degree is a vertex that has an odd number of edges in it. And here we see that node D is the only vertex that has two edges going to it. So that would be an even degree vertex. All the others, well, E only has one, C only has one edge, B only has one edge, and A has three. So all of these four vertices, A, B, C, and E, are odd degree vertices. And what we're going to do then is add in a couple of edges so that we can have a perfect minimum cost pairing between these four vertices. In other words, we're picking the two cheapest edges that will connect pairs of these uh, four vertices. And then we're going to add in these edges in step four to the minimum spanning tree. And you can see that we connected BC and we connected AE. We had our original minimum spanning tree that looked like this. We added in two additional edges, which I bolded here. Next, we need to find a Euler and Tour. What that is is basically a tour that we're going to start at node A. It walks the entire tree visiting every vertex, but Eulerian uses every edge. So we're going to go from A to B to C back to A to E to D to A. And that's our tour that walks the entire tree and it visits every edge and every vertex in the tree. And our last step is to take shortcuts. So the only shortcut we really want here is we notice that we're visiting A twice uh, after we leave node C to get to E. So we can cut a shortcut from C directly to E and not go back to A. So we go A, B, C, E, D. That's with the shortcuts. We've added one shortcut here. So that is our final step five, and that gives us our tour of this tree. That is Christophides' algorithm. And that gives us a 1.5 approximation. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.